Today we commemorate the feast of the Vietnamese martyrs and the readings that are the readings of the day are most appropriate. The reading from Revelation tells us that the martyrs have emerged, emerged victorious from their struggle with the forces of opposition. There's something very significant here. The martyrs died the most savage of deaths, and yet somehow they emerged victorious. And again and again, in the records of the early church, they describe a day of martyrdom as a day of victory. From the reading of Revelation, victorious martyrs sing two songs. They sing the song of the Lamb and the song of Moses, the servant of God, the song which Moses sang in triumph to God after the safe crossing of the Red Sea. But the martyrs also have their own songs composed entirely of quotations taken from the Old Testament. Great and wonderful are your works. O Lord, how great are your works. The works of the Lord are great. God has done marvelous things. Wonderful are your works. Just and true are your ways. You alone are holy. But there's another thing I think that should strike us about the songs of the triumphant martyrs. There's not one single word about their own achievement. From beginning to end, the song is a song praising the greatness of God. The gospel text as well reminds us that Jesus reads the signs of the times. While others might be blind to the approaching disaster on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus saw what was waiting for both him and for the disciples, and he was completely honest about it. This is what you must expect if you choose to follow me. Jesus believed in his disciples and promised that they would never meet their tribulations alone. Jesus spoke to them of a safety and a victory that surpasses the threats of the earth. Not one hair of your head will be harmed. Today, as I said, we commemorate the Vietnamese martyrs. And it's important to recall that we're speaking of thousands of women and men who were martyred at different periods of time, principally during the 19th century and some during the 20th century. The estimates put the total number at a minimum of 130,000 and at times in excess of 200,000 people. While we honor today the feast of Andrew Dulac and the 16 or the 116 other martyrs who were canonized by Pope John Paul II on June the 19th, 1988, John Paul, in that same ceremony, was insistent that we remember each day that we celebrate the feast of the Vietnamese martyrs, all of those martyrs, those whose names are known as well as those who are unknown. See, persecution has been an integral part of both the history and the growth of the church in Vietnam. Ten days ago, on November the 14th, Several hundred thousand Catholics of the approximately seven million Catholics that are in Vietnam gathered in the city of Hanoi to commemorate the martyrs, but also to celebrate the 350th anniversary of the founding of the two dioceses, the two original dioceses, that is, in Vietnam, the one in the north and the one in the south. Over the years, the church in Vietnam has been built on the blood of martyrs, and women and men of hope who continue to follow in their footsteps. Just one month ago, on October the 22nd, the process for the canonization of one of the Vietnamese cardinals, Cardinal Francois Xavier Nguyen Van Thuan, was officially opened. The bishop, or the cardinal, excuse me, had been appointed by Paul VI as the Cojuter Archbishop of Saigon in 1975 and he was subsequently jailed under the pretext or the accusation of having plotted with the Vatican and the imperialists against the communist revolution. He spent a total of 13 years in prison in North Vietnamese jails without ever receiving a trial. He was in solitary confinement for nine years and using breadcrumbs and wine smuggled in under the guise of stomach medicine, 
His hope was buoyed through the celebration of the Eucharist in the palm of his hand. In the year 2000, Pope John Paul II recalled that his imprisonment served to reinforce in us the consoling certainty that when everything else around us and maybe within us falls apart, Christ remains our unfailing support. The other day at the celebration, the auxiliary bishop of Ho Chi Minh made the following observation. He said, the celebration of the Vietnamese Catholic martyrs offers us the perfect opportunity to look back and thank God, to learn the lessons of history, and to discuss the current situations of the church, its advantages, its disadvantages, what creates difficulties, to seek solutions to build a church that discerns and follows the will of God. Today, the Catholic Church in Vietnam is made up of more than seven million members, between seven to eight percent of the population. Today, they are a missionary church, reaching out to the farthest corners of the earth. There are women religious, lay people, and priests from Vietnam working throughout the world, extending their faith, their heritage from the blood of the martyrs. There are approximately 5,200 Vietnamese priests, 4,000 of them working in Vietnam, and 1,200 working in mission in 100 countries throughout the world. The church in Vietnam today is a church in mission that lives with hope and conviction, strengthened by the blood of their martyrs. Please join me in prayer. As we gather this day to remember the Vietnamese martyrs, I also want to remember the many Christians in Iraq who are at this time suffering persecution for them and for the church in Iraq. We pray to the Lord. We remember people who are the victims of violence. We remember their families. And we pray that somehow that violence will be surmounted everywhere in our world. And for that grace for all of us, we pray to the Lord. We pray that we have the grace to be peacemakers, that we may find peace in our hearts, peace in our homes and in our communities, and for the grace that each of us will have to be a peacemaker, we pray to the Lord. And all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. Be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away our iniquity, cleanse us from our sin. Pray, friends, that this, our sacrifice, may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Father, receive the gifts we bring in memory of your martyrs. Keep us strong in our faith and in our witness to you, and grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts Amen. and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. And Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Your holy martyrs from Vietnam followed the example of Christ and gave their lives for the glory of your name. Their death reveals your power shining through our human weakness. 
You choose the weak and make them strong in bearing witness to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And in our unending joy, we echo on earth the song of the angels in heaven as they praise your glory forever.